Hello everyone, my name is Chris Top and I'd like to welcome you to another installment of the Figuring Out Fatherhood Chris Unplugged podcast. This podcast is a spin-off of the Figuring Out Fatherhood series which you can, which you can find on YouTube. I've inserted the link in the top left corner. I can never figure out if it's left or right. Over there you can find the original series and have a look at it and enjoy it. The purpose of this podcast is for me is just to share tips I've gained on my fatherhood journey that will help me in your journey to being a better parent. I also share personal development advice as well and sometimes lifestyle advice. You can follow me on my personal Instagram page which is Chris underscore top up to keep up to date with things that I get up to. You can also follow the official Figuring Out Fatherhood page which is Figuring Out Fatherhood all one word underscore. On today's episode I'm going to cover absent parents and the impacts they have on children our children. This is actually a continuation of the episode I did last week which covered inconsistent parents and this is not to say that I endorse either type of parent, this is just to highlight the impact that they have on children. The first thing we need to do actually is establish what an absent parent is and in short form an absent parent is the parent who's not there to help you share the burden or the load of raising your child. Now the absent parent could be absent for a number of reasons, it could be Unfortunately, they may have passed away. Unfortunately, they might be ill, mental illness. They may live in another country. In some instances, you may not know who the father is, unfortunately. But for the purpose of this episode, we're just going to cover absent parents from a viewpoint of the parents who just refuse or choose not to be in their child's life. It is worth noting at this point that just being physically present doesn't necessarily mean you're a present parent. People can be physically present but also emotionally absent or psychologically unfit to be parents. But again, for the purpose of this episode, we're just going to cover the, parent, the, the parents who have chosen not to be in their child's life. Another key point I think I want to cover as well is there are fundamental differences between parents who were initially in their child's life and then chose to be absent for example off the back of a divorce or separation and there's differences between that and the parents who were never present in the first place but again for the purpose of this episode we're going to cover parents who have chosen from the beginning to not be present in their child's life okay second thing i'm going to do now is cover the impacts an absent parent has on their child it's worth noting that not all children suffer the effects of an absent parent in the same way these things are they're actually pretty varied depending on the reason why the parent is absent, how long they've been absent for, the age of the child, etc. But this is a, this is just a list of things I picked up doing research. But please note this list is not exhaustive and feel free to do your own research as well. I've also added some of the references I used in the description below. The first impact that I came across pretty much on every article I looked at is diminished self-esteem. Children thrive on parental engagement and support and encouragement. So when a parent is absent, they lack that from one angle. The other parents can obviously compensate or in some ways overcompensate as well. But as they grow up and get to school age where they see other, other children with their parents as well, they will start to notice that they are missing something. They are missing parental support, encouragement and guidance and love and praise from one parent. The second thing I want to cover is lack of motivation. When a child's self-esteem is taking a hit, as they grow up, they tend to become more introverted and they don't feel they're special, capable or worthy and as a result they don't have the confidence to chase their dreams. The third impact I have to cover actually is problematic relationships. Children can develop a poor image of themselves as a result of the absent parent and this could lead to them being resentful and fearing abandonment so this actually negatively impacts their relationships as they get older. The fourth impact I have to cover actually is aggression. Children could be holding on to resentment, which sometimes manifests itself as aggression and problematic behaviour. The fifth and final impact I want to cover is attitude problems. Children from absent parent homes tend to grow up to have a I don't care, sort of careless attitude towards things, and this is as a result of them trying to compensate for the missing parent. This also tends to manifest itself as bad behaviour, rudeness, or just be generally being rebellious. The next thing I'm going to cover is some tips on how to support your child if they are dealing with an absent parent. Children generally start to ask questions about their missing parent when they reach school age, which is where they start to see other children with both parents and they start to wonder to themselves, why am I, why have I only got my mum here? Why have I only got my dad here? What's missing? The first tip is to give your child an age appropriate explanation while also keeping the door open for future conversations to be had. And when I say age appropriate, I mean age appropriate in the sense of easy for them to understand that any get at that particular age 
you don't overload them with information that they may find, they may find hard to process. Remember, you, the present parent, knows your child best, so it's up to you to determine how much information they can handle at any given point in time. Be assure the child that they're loved and the decision by the absent parent to be absent is no reflection on anything the child has done or a reflection on the child themselves. Reinforce the fact that the absent parent made that decision on their accord and their accord only. Children will be curious about what the absent parent looks like, so I encourage you to show them pictures. Any pictures that you have, any albums, any any sort of mementos or anything from the other parents will be useful that you can share with them and this will help them with their self-identity as well because knowing what their the absent parent looks or potentially even sounds like as well could go, some, could go a long way. Boost your child's self-esteem. Like I said previously, one impact um, an absent parent has on the child is their self-esteem. But in an instance where the other parent has actually moved on with someone else and had more children with someone else, it can be particularly painful for the child, especially if they know about this. So take steps to counteract how they're feeling by boosting their self-esteem. You can do this by spending time with them, doing activities which makes them feel good about themselves. Encourage the child to think positively about themselves. Don't badmouth the other parent. What you, do, what you end up doing when you do that is you're putting negative information into the child's mind, which they do not need to have. Consider reaching out to the absent parent. I know this can be particularly painful, especially if you've been for a toxic situation with that parent, but consider reaching out to them, explain to them that the child is asking about them and they would like to establish a formal relationship with them. But obviously only do this if it's safe for you and safe for your child to explore this. Sometimes this may turn out to be negative. Sometimes the parent, the, the absent parent may, you, may weaponize this and say that it's because you need them in your life or they may say it's because you're trying to spend more time with them or something, something along those lines. But rise above it, be the bigger parent and just focus on your child's needs. Help your child identify their need or needs. More often than not, when a, when a child is eager to meet their absent parent is because there's a need they feel like it's, it's not being met and the only person who can meet that need is the absent parent so if you're able to identify what that need is or what they think that need is you may be able to fill that need and that will in some way remove the need or that eagerness to meet the absent parent. and finally seek professional help or professional advice if you're dealing with an absent parent especially in situations where you may have come from a toxic situation with that absent parent, it's best for you and for your child to seek help so you're not dealing with it alone. Some bonus information actually while I cover an absent parent is what to do when an absent parent gets in touch. Talk to your child about their feelings. Keep in mind they're going to be experiencing a wide variety of emotions if an absent parent tries to get in touch with them. It could be happiness, it could be joy, it could be anger, it could be sadness, it could be disappointment, it could be any number of things, but a good starting point is to help help them by talking to them about how they feel and talking them through how they feel and explaining to them that how they feel is very, very valid. Secondly, the child may want to throw themselves into this new relationship with their absent dad, but what you could do is explain to your child to take their time to get to know this new parent. If the absent parent is committed to actually being present now, Explain to your child that there's absolutely no rush and to, they can take their time to get to know this new parent. Slow things down a little bit until you're confident and you feel comfortable with this new relationship they're establishing. Pay attention to your child. They may start to feel overwhelmed or pressured as a result of this new parent in their life and this influx of emotions. So just pay attention and keep in mind that it may not be immediately obvious what they're going through, but just pay attention to how they're feeling and take your time with them to understand how they're feeling. No one knows your child like you do, so it's important that if you feel that it'll be best for your child to slow things down and slow things down, if you feel it's best for your child to pause things actually, then do just that. Keep your emotions and your thoughts in check. Naturally, as the present parent, you may feel negatively towards this absent parent coming to try and establish a new relationship with your child that you've been present for, for from day one. But don't speak negatively about this towards you, to your child and don't speak negatively about this towards the parent as well, actually. You may be upset and you may disapprove of this new relationship, but keep in mind that it's your child's needs that come first above how you feel and above how the other parent feels as well. This also depends on if your child is in danger or not. If your child is in danger, the first thing you need to do is protect your child and seek help. And the final thing to do if an absent parent gets in touch is seek professional help. Obviously, it's good being able to speak to your support network around. Your support network can consist of your friends, your family, your colleagues sometimes as well. But 
sometimes you may need more than that. You may need an impartial ear to speak to. You may just want to, you may want to speak to a counselor or a mediator or a therapist who can guide you through this new, these new feelings that you're feeling, especially if you both come from a toxic situation. In majority of cases, actually, this access to the child is the key issue. So in those situations where the absent parent has come back and wants to be in a child's life, it's worth seeking counsel or finding a family mediator who is able to help you find a resolution. The wealth of the child has to be the absolute number one priority throughout the process, no matter how long the parent was absent for. Understanding the impacts an absent parent has on a child isn't particularly easy, but what I've done is I've given you a summary of a few things I've learned while I was doing research into this. And there you have it, people. If you enjoyed this episode, learned something new, feel like there's someone out there who may learn something new by watching this episode, please like it, share it with your friends, share on social media, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It means a lot to me. Don't forget to follow the Instagram page. It's figuring out fatherhood, all one word, underscore. And obviously my personal page as well, which is Chris underscore topper. And while we're here, actually, let me know if you actually like this top. So I personally designed this print. It's actually meant to be a bit more vibrant, but the printers, who printed this for me, they didn't, I don't think they particularly did a good job. I also don't like this hoodie. For some reason, the sleeves are extra baggy. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you like this and I will get a link out ASAP to where you can order it as well. And as always, I'm going to leave you how I always leave you, and that is to make your mission today to make a decision that future you will be grateful for. Future you will be grateful for addressing the impacts an absent parent has on your child. And if you are the absent parent, future you will be grateful for taking the time to understand the impacts and deciding to be present in your child's life. Be that parent that your child needs. So until next time, guys.